Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N R Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the T's study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve problems that you will find on page number. 74. Problem, number seven. Problems that you will find on page number 74. These problems deal with the concept of percentage. These are percentage problems, percentage word problems. And if you want to get some more practice, if you want to get some more practice, you will find that we have solved every single math problems that appeared in the previous edition, the fifth edition. You will find the solutions to all of the problems from the fifth edition from day number 1 through 80. And the percentage problems we dealt with in this book is something that you will find on day number 13 and 14. Day number 13 and 14. Where you will find additional problems. In addition to that, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share with you one more source if you're interested in getting some more practice with, with percentage problems. A lot of people have trouble, trouble with the percentage problems. Watch this series. It's called basic math just type in Keshwani and then type in basic math and watch day 31 through 40 if you don't want to watch all 10 of them obviously you don't have to watch all 10 of them just watch 2 or 3 or 4 whatever you like whatever whatever does the, does the job for you or until I bore the pants off you do you understand then you start that's that's the that's the modus, modus operandi of most people who deal with me they keep dealing with me until I bore the pants off them and then they walk away. Problem number one is what we're dealing with on page number 74. Number one. The expression that we just used here was modus operandi. It's an Italian expression which just means the method of doing something, the way of doing something. Most people have heard of modus operandi in the crime drama on the televisions, but they don't actually say modus operandi, they just say MO. They say, oh, look at how the body is lying on the floor, look at how, how it is, uh, this and that and that. This is it's the same guy, it's the same guy who did, committed the previous murder last week, because it's the same MO. It is the same modus operandi, same method of operation. How do we use this expression just now? What I said is that the modus operandi, that is the usual modus operandi when people are dealing with me, that is they listen to me until I bore the pants off them and then they walk away. That seems to be the modus operandi. And that's what I want you to do. You don't have to watch all 10 of them. Keep watching until I bore the hell out of you. Then you stop. Number one. In question number one we are told that the salary is $50,000. We have further told that this person gets 4% raise. 4% raise. The question is, what is the new salary? What is the new salary? What is the new salary? We can go about it in several different ways. We can make a lot of fuss about it or we can do it in a straightforward way. Let's do it both ways, shall we? Let's make a lot of first and let's do this straightforward way. The straightforward method would be this word. You see, the $50,000 is the amount, we know this implies that 10%, 10 of 50,000, 10% of 50,000, how do you find 10%? 10% of something means one tenth of something. 10% of 50,000, you just divide this amount by 10, 50,000 divided by 10, that's what 10% means, 10% means a tenth of something. Zero is cancel out and 10% is 5,000. 5,000 is 10% of 50,000. As, as you can see, this is I'm making too much fuss again. If 10% is 5,000, that implies that 1%, 1% of 50,000 must be, again, one tenth of this thing. One tenth of that is going to be 500. We don't want 1%, we want 4%. If 1% is 500, then that implies, that in turn implies that 4% must be, 4% must be, 500 times 4. Oh, we could have done it right here instead of rewriting everything. 
we could have done it here. If 1% is 500, that implies that 4%, 4, 4 times 1 is 4%, must be 4 times this amount, which is $2,000. Question is, what is her new salary? Well, her new salary is she used to get 50000 She got a $2,000 raise. Her new salary must be $52,000. There we go. That's all. And the way we could have done is, and the way we need the room, so I'm going to have to erase this thing. And the way so we could have done it is more academic way, which is this way. We need to figure out 4% of 50,000. That's what we need. We need to figure out 4% of 50,000. This is more academic way. You understand? 4, what does percent mean? Percent means over 100. The word percent, we have talked about this many times. The word percent means out of 100. Out of 100. Percent, that's why it's called percent per cent, which is where the term, which is where the word century comes from. Century means 100 per 100, per out of 100 or Per 100. Percent means per 100. 4 percent. It means 4 out of 100. 4 out of 100. Off means, off means times. And then 50,000. We want to find out what that is. Well, let's see. We have a, we have a 100 at the bottom. We have a 100 at the bottom. We have 50,000 on the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. If you divide top and bottom by 10, we're going to knock out this zero. Let's divide top and bottom by 10 one more time, we're going to knock out that zero. In other words, let's divide top and bottom by 100. And there you go. It's simply 500 times 4. We get a, we get a $2,000 raise. Therefore, our new salary is going to be $2,000 of raise plus the $50,000 that we used to get for a grand total of $52,000. Let's do number two. Let's do number two. I'm not sure if this is spelled correctly. If it's not spelled correctly, then that's your problem, not mine. And that is called a compassionate teacher. Understand? What is 25% of? What is 25% of? 680. 600 and 80. That's the question. What 25% we know, 25% of anything is simply one quarter of it. 25% of something, we know that 25% of something, this is ST, it stands for something. 25% of something is, is simply one quarter of it. That's what 25% means. 25% means one quarter of something. So when they ask you what is 25% of 680, this is the same as asking what is what is a quarter of 680. All we have to do is divide 680 by 4. 680 by 4. Let's do it, shall we? Let's do it together. Again, in the basic math series, which is right, I don't know if I ever told you this thing about it or not, I don't remember now. So there's a second source where you will find more, well, I think we did talk about it, basic math, is this thing here, basic math. Just type in basic math, Kishwani, if, if, if you have trouble finding something, type in my name also, because there might be many, many people doing the same exact thing that I am. Just type in Kishwani and then basic math, day 31, and the video will pop right up. And in this same series, you will find how to divide one number by another without having to do the long division. Let's do it together here. How many four does six have? Listen very carefully. How many fours does six have? Six has only one four. Six has only one four. After we take away the four from the six, we have a remainder of two. What happens to the two? Two goes and joins the eight and becomes 28. Two goes and joins the eight and becomes 28. How many fours does 28 have? 28 has Seven fours. Seven fours are twenty-eight. Seven fours are twenty-eight. How many fours does zero have? Zero has no fours. Zero has no fours. 
there we go. We have divided Taubin bottom by 4. The answer is 170. It turns out it looks like 1 quarter of 680 is 170. Therefore, the question was what is 25% of 680? 25% of 680 is 170. Let's do the same division here one more time, the long way, and see if you can understand the language. We're dividing 680, we're dividing 680 by 4. Watch what happens. We're going to divide 680 by 4 and watch what happens. Are you ready? How many 4's does 6 have? 6 has 1 4. 6 has 1 4. After we take away the 4 from the 6, after we take away the 4 from the 6, we have a remainder of 2. How many 4's how many does 6 have? 6 has 1 4. After we take away the 4 from the 6, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to that 2? That 2 joins, that 2 goes and joins the 8 and becomes 28. That 2 goes and joins the 8 and becomes 28. How many 4's does 28 have? 28 has 7 4's. 28 has 7 4's. After we take away 28, we have a remainder of 0. This 0 comes down and now how many 4's does 0 have? 0 has no 4's. 0 has no 4's. That's the, that's the long division. This is more grown up there. But it's the same exact thing. So the answer is 25% of 680 is 170. Now, other way you could have done this problem, instead of figuring, instead of just, instead of thinking in terms of one quarters, instead of thinking of one 25% as being one quarter of something, we could have actually done the problem in a more traditional way as a percentage problem. Let's do it that way. Let's see what happens. The question is, so we're not going to worry about, we're not going to worry, we're not going to worry about the fact that 25% of something is one quarter of it. We're simply going to do it as a percentage problem. Watch what happens. Okay. What? That's our unknown. We're going to repre represent our unknown with x. That's our unknown. Is means equal. 25 is just 25. What about percent? Well, percent means out of 100. Percent means out of 100, right there. Off means times. Off means times. And 680. There is no equation. I'm going to rewrite the equation without the arrows. It says what is 25% of 680. We're almost done. Watch what happens. Now we're going to do it out. Watch what happens. Well, we see a 0 on the top. You see a 0 at the bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. And if it confuses you that I speak, I refer to the 680 as the top. Well, the 680 actually is a fraction. It's 680 over 1. If it makes it easier for you to see it. Divide top and bottom by 10, the 10 zeros drop out. Now we have a 10 at the bottom, we have 25 at the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. 10 has 2 5s and 25 has 5 5s. We see 68 on the top, we see 2 at the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 2. 2 goes away, 6 has 3 2s and 8 has 4 2s. So the answer is 34 times 5. And 34 times 5, you will find in a second, is exactly 170. And how do we know it? Well, we know it. There are a couple of ways we can figure it out. One way is to actually do it out. 34 times 5. 5 4s are 20. 0. Carry 2. 3 5s are 15. Plus 2 is 70. 170, you see. So that's one way to figure out what 34 times 5 is. Another way to, is to ask ourselves, how much is 34 times 10? Well, if 34 times 10 is 340, if 34 times 10 is 340, then 34 times 5, which stands to reason, must be half of 340. What is half of 340? Do you know? Don't look at me. I, I don't know. How the hell do I know? I know what half. What is half of 300? That I do know. I know half of 300 is 150. I also know that half of 40 is 20. Well, if half of 300 is 150 and half of 40 is 20, then again, it stands to reason that half of 340 should be 150 plus 20, which is 170. Let's do number 3. I hope that you don't think I'm too crazy when I do stuff like that. But that is how we do things in the desert. Number 3 says, our shirt is regularly, regularly is not how you spell it, 
assured is regularly priced at $45 and is marked 30% off. I'm going to erase all of this thing. Let's erase all of this. So, a shirt we are told whose regular price is $45 and today they have a sale going on and it is marked 30% off its regular price. Don't say off off its regular price. It's not off off. It's 30% off its regular price. Question is, what is the reduced price? What is what is the reduced price? Again, we have two options. We can go about it in two different ways. One way is to do it out in a more geeky, more nerdy, more academic, more more traditional way, uh, the freakish way or the quick and dirty way. The quick and dirty way was to be simply to understand that 10%, 10% of 45, you just move the decimal from here to here. 45 is like this, 45 is like this. If you want 10%, if you want one tenth of it, if you divide 45 by 10, it becomes 4.5. 10% of 45 is 4.5. If you don't want 10%, you're going to figure out what 30% is because that's how much less we're going to pay. We're going to pay 30% less than its regular price. If you can figure out what 30% of 45 is, we can subtract that from the regular price and we are done. Let's do it that time. We don't want 10%, we want 30%. So let's multiply both sides by 3. 10 times 3, 10 times 3 is 30%. Since we're multiplying this side by 3, we must multiply that side by 3. Now we just have to figure out what 4.5 times 3 is. Do you know what 4 times 4.5 times 3 is? What the hell do I know? Don't look at me. Let's find out, shall we? 3 times 4.5. Don't write 4.5 as 4.5. Write that as 4 and a half. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. 3 times 4 is 12. You agree? 3 times 4 is 12. And 3 times half is 3 halves. That's why it's called 3 halves. 1 half, 2 halves, 3 halves. 3 halves is 3 halves. 3 times half is 3 halves, which is 1 and 1 half. So this amount simply is 13 and a half. That's how much less we're going to pay. That's how much less we're going to pay of its regular price. The regular price was $45. We're just going to simply subtract 13 and a half. So 45 minus 13.5. We have to carry one from here. It becomes 4. This becomes 5. 4 minus 3 is 1. And three minus one. It looks like we're going to pay thirty-one dollars. We're going to pay thirty-one dollars and and fifty cents. On the way, could have on the way we could have done it. Uh, this problem instead of having to, to figure out how much less we're going to pay and then sub having to subtract that amount from the regular price. On the way we could have done it is to simply understand that something is marked thirty percent off. That means we are only going to pay seventy percent of the price because we're getting 30% discount. So on the way, the quicker way would have been, the more direct way would have been, instead of figuring it out 30%, let's figure out 70%. Let's multiply both sides by 7. In which case, that will be the price we'll be paying, because we will be paying simply 70% of the regular price. 10% is 4.5, 7 times 7 is 4, 4 and a half times 7. So let's see what happens. 4 and a half times 7, not 3, but seven, what would happens? Four and a half <coughs> times seven. Excuse me. This is a seven. Seven times four is twenty-eight. Seven four is a twenty-eight. And seven times half is seven halves. Seven halves is made up of three and one half. Why three and one half? Because two halves make a one. And the two half will make a two, and the two half will make a three. So so far I have six halves, two halves, two halves, two halves. That's the three, and three and a half is seven halves. As you can see, seven halves. Seven halves are three and a half. So this is twenty-eight and a three and a half, which is thirty-one and a half dollars. The amount that we'll pay 
the new price is thirty-one and a half dollars. Another way could have we could have done this problem is more academic way, which is to set it up as an equation. Let's do it on the top here. Because what we're trying to figure out here, what we're trying to figure out here is what is what is seventy percent of forty-five. That's what we want to know. Because that's what we'll be paying, because it's thirty percent off, which means we only pay seventy percent. What that is our unknown, what is our unknown? We represent usually with a letter X, that's just a convention. That's just a tradition. If you use letter Y to represent the unknown or letter Z or letter P or Q, nobody's going to come and arrest you, do you understand? But the convention dictates that we letter we use letter X to represent the unknown. So that's your unknown. What is means equals 70 is simply 70. Percent means, or oh yeah, I just erased it, percent means out of 100. Off means times 45. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. We better get 31 and a half. Watch what happens. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. We see a zero here, we see a zero here. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. After we have done that, we see a 10 on the top, but the bottom, we see 45 on the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. 10 has two fives and 45 has nine fives. Seven times nine, seven times nine is 63 divided by two. 63 divided by two. How do we divide 63 by two? Let's find out, shall we? Watch what happens. How many, we're gonna divide by two. How many twos does three have? Uh, sorry, how many twos does six have? Does six have, how many Two's the six has. Six is just one six. Six has, not have, is singular. How many twos the six has? Six has three twos. Six has three twos. How many three? How many twos? Six has three twos. How many twos does three? It should be have. How many? How many twos does three have? Three has. Oh, I don't quite know the English language properly, I guess. Three has, because it goes back and forth between singular and plural. Three has one, two. Three has one, two. After we take away the two from the three, after we take away the two from the three, we have a remainder of one. And what happens to that one? But that one must be divided by the two. Voila. In other words, 63 divided by 2 is 31 and a half, just like we saw here, just like we saw here. There are three different ways you could have done this problem. You pick and choose which way you want to do it and knock yourself out. Bye now.